Hello, this video is a small portion of a complete comprehensive video. If you'd like to see this complete comprehensive case and many other complete comprehensive cases, click on the link in the description below. Why did you lose your sealant? Let's first talk about what a sealant is. A sealant is flowing a composite material into the occlusal groove, generally of molar teeth. You can also place them on bicuspid teeth so that you don't have a groove in the top of the tooth for plaque, calculus, sweet to pack down into. So you're filling this groove up and that hopefully keeps sweet and plaque and calculus from getting down in that groove. Decay eats its way down those dentinal tubules and when it gets into the nerve of the tooth, then you get an abscess tooth or a necrotic pulp or what have you. So the idea is to fill this up early on so you don't get decay. Now, see, these are other teeth that have decay in the grooves of the teeth. You really don't see that decay. And then this one is just small. Remember, decay is like a termite in a wall. It doesn't make a giant hole in the enamel. It makes a pinprick like a termite in a wall and then it blows up once it gets inside. So you don't see that one. This one doesn't look so bad, but once I remove the enamel, that one was like this in the dentin. This one was decayed into the nerve of the tooth and I had to do a root canal and a crown. This was a Baylor student. See these little tiny black holes in those grooves in the tooth. When I removed the enamel, this is what the teeth look like. I had to do 10 root canals and 10 crowns on him. When you do a sealant on a tooth, you want to fill this up, this groove, so you don't get decay in that groove. So if somebody eats gummy bears, Jolly Ranchers, Twix, Snickers, all that kind of stuff, they're going to pack that stuff in that groove if it's not sealed. So that's what a sealant is. It's meant to fill this up. If a hygienist is trying to do it alone on a seven-year-old kid, if you get saliva over the tooth, it's going to contaminate the bond. It's not going to bond effectively. If you haven't cleaned the groove out, just think it through. It's probably not going to stick. It may do, may do okay, but it's not going to be nearly as good as if you're working with an assistant if the teeth are erupted and the child will let you do it, even place a rubber dam so you don't have saliva flowing over the tooth when you're placing the sealant. They're trying to put sealants in these teeth on a seven to 10 year old kid. That's usually when you place sealants. They're trying to keep the tooth dry and most of the time they're not taught to clean that groove out. Well, if you've got plaque and the, you know, food debris and sweet, sticky sweet, whatever it is, that's packed down in there and you don't clean it out. I grew up ranching and it's like trying to stick two boards together that are dirty. They won't stick. You've got to clean it out first. There are probably other ways to do it, but what makes sense to me is take a little tiny mosquito diamond, just very tiny, down in that groove and clean it and it freshens the surfaces and it cleans anything out that's in there. Then take some isopropyl alcohol after you've done that and just scrub it. Then, in my opinion, a sealant ought to be like a little tiny composite filling. Place it just like you place the composite. Etch the tooth, place primer adhesive, blow the primer adhesive off, cure it, and then put place flowable composite in this groove, which really seals it. So this is the upper right. You can see the decay under the sealant, the old sealants. There's a remnant of the old sealant, but that's decayed underneath it. I just, I routinely see sealants that have been lost and part of it will be lost, but not all of it. So that's why I'm advocating start placing sealants like I'm showing you how to place them and there'll be a much longer lasting restoration. I'm placing composites on these teeth where I'm replacing the decay, the sealant with decay underneath it. 330 carbide burr. 
isolated rubber dam makes the assistance job so much easier. One of the first things you want to do when you're placing a sealant is be sure there's not decay down in that groove. That's another thing that Mosquito Diamond does. It opens it up a little bit so you've got a better view of the underlying part of that groove. And if there's decay, then you ought to place a composite filling. You want to remove that decay. You don't want to place the sealant on top of decay. So I'm opening this up. I want direct access to the decay. Now I'm coming in with my, this is a number six round burr. I prefer number six. Just whatever size you like. If it's small, you might use a number four, but I usually use a number, number six for decay removal. And the reason I'm using the slow speed is the slow speed will just remove the decay and unless the dentin were really soft, it wouldn't remove the healthy dentin. So I'm opening it up again. It's just like termites in a wall. You know, they make a small opening in the enamel and then, or in the wall, then they blow up once they get into the sheetrock. So the dentin is like sheetrock. See, I'm getting to the bottom of this. I haven't started on this one yet. Checking it with my Explorer. And how do you know when you've gotten rid of all the decay? What if it's just stained? Well, you take your Explorer and when it's not sticky, when it's hard, like a tabletop, then, as Dr. Harvey, one of my instructors in dental school used to say, it's affected but not infected. So as soon as it's hard, I'll take one more pass with my slow speed handpiece, round burr, and just remove anything that comes off easily. And once it's getting firm, I'll make another pass with that round burr, just to be sure I've gotten all the decay. Sometimes it's hard, it's hard to tell if you've got soft enamel or if you've got dark, dark dentin. It's it can be a little hard to differentiate, so use your Explorer, and that's why I put the isopropyl alcohol cotton ball in the tooth once I feel like I've gotten every bit of it. It's just kind of the last, uh, the last move to say, take that bacteria, <laughs> and I'll let it soak for a couple of minutes. There's the isopropyl alcohol once I've removed everything, and it's good firm tooth structure on the floor of the prep. Then this is, 38% uh, phosphoric acid. Remember, you can et etch enamel basically as much as you want. I'll usually etch enamel for 45 seconds to a minute. Dentin, you only want to etch for about 15 seconds. Or you can collapse the dentinal tubules and you'll lose the hybrid layer when you place the primer adhesive. Then rinse that out, dry it. Doesn't have to be desiccated because acetone is attracted to water. It's hydrophilic. And so you just want it, if it's a little damp, that's okay. And then blow this primer adhesive dry. The acetone will pull the primer down into the dentinal tubules. But then you want to blow it dry to get rid of the acetone because the acetone can neg negatively affect the bond strength of the restoration. Then I'm blowing that primer adhesive off till nothing wiggles into a two by two. Again, don't blow it all over the teeth and all over the gums. Blow it into a two by two. Then cure the primer adhesive for about five seconds. Then I'm gonna place, since these are deeper, I'm gonna place flowable composite as a base, about a millimeter thick, because it's very wettable. It just really clings to the floor of that preparation. Then I'm gonna cure the flowable composite for 20 seconds with this Dimitron curing light. Now I'm gonna place the highly filled resin. This is Filtech Supreme from 3M, Heliomolar, all those are good. And I'm gonna place no more than two millimeters, a two millimeter layer at a time without curing it. This instrument right here is invaluable for direct composite placement. This ball burnisher, you can smooth that in it condenses it. So again, this is not a sealant. This is a composite that I've had to place because there was decay under the sealant because the sealant fell apart, came out. The sealant didn't seal the uh, grooves of the, the occlusal grooves of the teeth. Now this is the lower right. You can see the decay underneath here. Got the rubber dam. So I'm just opening that up so I've got direct access. I don't want to have to go under a cusp to remove the decay. That's the dental minute. These techniques work and they work every time. 
Are you ready to take your dentistry practice to the highest level possible? Of course you are. Subscribe right now to DentistryMasterClasses.com where you will get Dr. Cupper's greatest work and best cases. Here's what you're going to get when you subscribe to DentistryMasterClasses.com. Incredible comprehensive cases not seen in Dental Minute videos. You will get an organized library of all the Dental Minute videos and Dentistry Masterclasses, comprehensive cases for study and reference, before and after photos of Dr. Cupper's fantastic restored cases. And all of this, I repeat, all of this is just $40 a month. This is something you cannot pass up. Subscribe right now to DentistryMasterclasses.com.